We're recording. <laughs> Welcome, everybody. Uh, this is the Northampton Malaysia Review Commission Alternatives to Policing Subcommittee. Today is February 3rd, 2021. This meeting is going to be from 7.30 to 9. It's being recorded, and it's, uh, this meeting is happening over Zoom. Um, let's, um, let's go with a roll call. Okay. Uh, Noah. <clears throat> Booker. Here. Javier. Here. Alex. Here. And Carol. Here. Great. Thank you. Perfect. Um, so I'm going to just follow the agenda. Cool. 7.35. So uh, we're going to open for uh, the section for public comment. Comments are going to be three minutes. Booker is going to time those three minutes. Uh, if you want to use uh, this time in public speaking, please raise your hand. If you have the latest version of Zoom, go to the reactions bottom on, on the bottom of your screen and you're going to find the feature to raise your hand. If you don't see it, feel free to uh, turn on your camera and wave your hand and I will call on you. So this is a moment for people to do the public speaking. Anybody? Anybody one? Anybody two? Anybody three? And that's it. Thank you so much. And so we're going to move uh, with uh, uh, acceptance of minutes. Um, everybody was able to get the minutes. I'm going to have to get you all those next time. So we're going to table the yeah. acceptance of minutes. So I'm going to transfer the power of the chair to Booker. Mm -hmm. um, I had left this meeting open and we were um, uh, we were hoping to have a speaker, which we do not have for this evening. And we were hoping to have a speaker. Uh, um, Javier and I have both been working on people and unfortunately we drew a blank. Um, so um, are there, so the agenda has been framed in a way that it allows for general discussion, both ab about all of the issues we've been discussing. We could go now to the questions that have been that have been submitted to Chief Casper, mm -hmm. if it's okay. Can Alex, <laughs> would it be okay if we go to that now as a discussion? Sure. Uh, can I mention and, something, Booker, yes, in, relation to, in relation to speakers? So um, I talked to work about this. So. I contacted um, the two co-directors of Nelquid, and I sent yesterday night uh, an email giving the option of this meeting or another day at uh, the 17, I think, that you gave me, Booker. Yes. So either of those two, obviously, short time between t t yesterday and today. So I'm hoping that they would be, they are going to be able to come to talk to us in the 17. That's just an update about the speakers. Okay. Thank you. Um... I'm, by the way, I'm, I think we should go on to talk about the questions we're going to talk with the police chief about. If, it, if you're the kind of person who multitasks while you're listening to other things, I would like to spend some time later in this meeting talking about decision-making process, about setting priorities, um, and what things we're going to want to submit. Beginning to um, think, I, wanna, I would like to move towards thinking about what things we want to make as priorities. Um, um, so I just want that sitting in the back of your minds as you're thinking about the other thing we're about to talk about. Um, I think we'll have time during this meeting to really do some consideration and thinking about those issues. So, I mean, thanks. As Javier said at the last meeting, I spent a lot of time reading the consensus building document that was sent to us. Um, and uh, that's not what I really want to talk about, though we might talk about that. So having said that, I'm, I'm giving you that so that we don't spring onto things later in the meeting. Alex, um, could you, would you mind re-showing us the questions that we're going to be submitting to Chief Casper or have already been submitted to Chief Casper? 
Sure. So I, I put them in the chat. If we do, do you prefer to share screen or to view it in a separate window? Uh, what would people prefer? My, my personal preference is maybe to, because I can divide my screen between me talking and seeing you guys at the same time. And I like that. If that's okay. Sure. Also, I know that the internet, ha internet has been finicky with the latest, you know, weather happenings. Mm -hmm. So. <clears throat> um, okay, this may be too small, uh, but we'll, we'll see what happens. So is that visible? Do you want me to make it bigger? Bigger in the chat, yeah. Yeah, the chat is a good way to read it. Yeah, that's the way I prefer looking at it. But this is, I think you've blown it up well enough, Alex. I, even with my bifocals, I can see it well. And uh, Javier, so but what the points that I made in, on Fridays mm -hmm. did, uh, did you watch Friday's meeting or uh, should I? Okay, um, <clears throat> were to get gather information, try to understand how things are done now, and to see what kind of pushback uh, we might get on particular issues, so that we can proactively. Um, be ready for that and proactively make recommendations that that address uh, pushback. So those were my my goals in the question. I mean, I didn't write all these questions, uh, but in the questions that I in framing the questions that I uh, put in. So I, I really appreciate the thoughtfulness of what you just ex explained. Um, I have to say, I have been a little frustrated in the last two to three meetings of the full commission. Um, and I'm pretty sure that's pretty obvious, but I appreciate that. I mean, you know, we came to a point that we are sort of more or less, at least in, among us, what needs to happen and what, what things should be sort of changed from the police to, to a different possible department and, um, yeah, I, I like, so I was reading this and the first question is something that I really, <laughs> I really want to I learn about. So I'm happy that even I was not here, I see a lot of those questions reflecting my mm -hmm. own interest to know how. I think even when we miss you, Javier, we find our way to we have your you. voice come in. Okay. We definitely channel you because you do have a strong voice. <laughs> Thank you. A clear, a clear voice. <laughs> <laughs> but you know what, Javier, hold on to that thought that you just had, and let's plan to come back to that. Yeah. Um, about <clears throat> where we are with the meeting with the commission process. Okay, mm -hmm. that's actually what I, what I really want to talk about. But let's do um, one thing. One thing is the questions. Second is. Do we want to think about the sequencing of the questions? All of these right. have I, been I submitted. Think, yes, mm -hmm. I, I agree. I think sequence is going to be important. <clears throat> so what would be a good opening question? <clears throat> I think that this patcher logic is a good opening question. And, and you know, what we may run into it is that even Chief Casper will, in her own answer, maybe will cluster yeah related topics sure. and questions sure. right yeah but so, you but know uh you know in in the typical form that is used in a hearing let's say if if the question is not really addressed in any level of specificity it's it's okay to go back and say so 
do I understand you correctly that da 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 or could you say more about this? You know, could you say more specific? Could say say something more specific about the dispatch, please. The details of the dispatch or how how um how is it discerned? Who goes out for what? So I think this is an appropriately open-ended question. Um, I think we may want to ask about more specificity about mm -hmm. things, um, but I think we've given an adequate entry into the fact that we see this as an important issue by mm -hmm. pre-giving it. Yeah, I mean, I can I can totally see Chief Casper saying, well, it depends. Depends if it's this, this, and this. And us saying, well, from what you're mentioning, what do you talk about this and this one? Hmm. But how? How is it decided? I would honestly, I would just trust the criteria of, of mm -hmm. you guys. Mm -hmm. No, I'm I'm saying that's what I want to know. How? <clears throat> My style with this kind of thing is to say. Can you tell us more about this? You tell us more, yeah. And if she, <laughs> if she says, I, you know, I'm, you may be surprised to hear this. I try to be a gentle person when I'm interviewing. Um, so that's what I would hope. Mm -hmm. That's that the we, way that I would. We can do. do. Oh, absolutely. Yeah. I think, I think she's, you know, feeling the heat anyway. We don't need to add more. You know, I had a, I was out in front of my house in Florence when the mailman came and he handed me my mail and said, I'm looking at what you're doing on the policing commission. I was really surprised to hear that he said that to me. Um, and, you know, we talked about, nor, nor, I'm not going to talk about this now, but it, it's interesting to hear how people are concerned about this and in many ways. I was totally surprised that he said that to me, so. Um, I would say our one concern is that we have an hour mm. and um, this, you know, these, these, you could fill up an hour answering these questions. I'm sure, no problem. Um, and we may not get to some, so, um, we may like, it's some sort of you know prioritization, uh, and I sort of just tried to do that um, by you know I think we talked about the restorative justice program as lo lower priority mm -hmm. um, right. to get an explanation of that, at, right? At present, but uh, yeah, because that could be a longer conversation, and I think it's appropriate to have it at the end if we have the time, but we may not. So Javier, just so that you know. One of our plans is our interview is from eight till nine and that we have time to debrief the interview amongst ourselves from nine Perfect. till 930. Of course, Chief Casper might still be on the call, but we would no longer be in discussion with the chief. Um, it's what, an opportunity for us to debrief the interview. So one question, if she's still in the call and we're debriefing and she has to be recognized by the chairs because of something that was said. Would that be allowed? Um, hmm. It's a good question. Tell, tell me. No, it's a, <laughs> <laughs> um, what do others think about that? Run the scenario again. If, if what? So oh, no. we, we, it's, it's nine, 10 mm -hmm. yeah. and we're discussing what we've heard from chief Casper. Right. And Chief Casper is still on the call, though we ended the interview. Mm -hmm. And Chief Casper raises her hand and says, can I comment on what you just said? Mm. What would we what should I do if I'm chairing that discussion? And, 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 and just to be clear, if this is because it's upon the chair to decide if somebody who is not part of the committee speaks or not. Deliberation, yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So I, I just think... want to. I just want to make sure we are so clear. With let me you. let me tell you what I would like to do. Uh, <laughs> um, if Chief Casper says I would like to say something else, I would say before I call on you, I'm going to speak with the rest of the committee to find out if it's okay if we hear from you. 
um, cause I think it, it's actually going to be contextual. Mm -hmm. Um, and mm -hmm. it depends a little bit on what the issue is. Um, so if I'm Javier and I haven't determined who's going to do this. Um, but I would prefer to say, thank you, chief Casper. Um, let me ask the committee if it's okay, if you comment at this point, um, would that be okay with you or would you prefer? Uh, th that would be okay with me, but that and, and, and this is really good because it's a specific. Mm -hmm. If if we're in the conversation, it's a conver if we're gonna debrief for thirty minutes, mm -hmm. right? And if that, let's say, if that comes uh, the first 10, 15 minutes, that's fine with me. But if that comes in the last ten, five minutes, it's not fine with me, because we okay. we the debrief needs to happen. And that and that 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 interjection can sort of block the debrief to happen. If that's the case, uh, she can write whatever she was gonna say and send it to us. Okay, I can. All, by the way, uh, I'm I'm about to ask Alex to tell me what the experience with city council would be for this kind of thing, um, but I could also set a time limit for her response at that point. So, but Alex, may I ask sort of when this kind of thing is done with city council or other commissions, what's the format? Um, so the one I'm most familiar with is, is the budget uh, presentations where the five largest departments mm -hmm. uh, present. Uh, some of you may have been in on that meeting at the beginning of June. Um, and so each each department head is is given time to both present and then uh, be asked questions, and then they're uh, that they're off after that. Um, and then we have deliberation oh. um, during that time. Um, I don't recall. I mean, you know, we may ask the mayor a question uh, and ask and you know bring him, you know, recognize him, but. Uh, I don't recall any, uh, you know, at bringing the the department heads back. Um, but I, so I usually, when when that section is done, it's done, but not necessarily. Mm -hmm. Okay, Carol. Uh, it, it it just occurred to me that I think it's unlikely that she would stay on. Uh, maybe I'm naive, but um, I I think there is a if we designate the time we have until nine o'clock to dialogue with you and pose questions my guess is that she, that would be the end of that chapter and she would probably depart but maybe i'm maybe i'm wrong it, yeah it may be but I, I i still think it's worth to worth to, having a plan yes yeah Murphy's Law says if we don't talk about this, she will stay. Yeah, you're right. You're right. <laughs> then, then you're stuck with the situation. I think the chief has been paying a lot of attention to what the commission has been doing. So I would rather I would rather assume that the chief is going to be present for our discussion. Okay. Just as a working mm -hmm. thing. Um, are there other comments about the questions? I, uh, by the way, Alex, I agree with the prioritization that you've given to the um, questions that I sent. I, I have a question in relationship to, and I don't see it, but may, I, I may not be looking in the right way. So one of the things that I was wondering, <clears throat> many times what, what I'm, I'm learning about, um, because we have talked about organizations that they have uh, in, created interests on because they are receiving money, right? But at the same time, there are grants that are given to uh, service providers uh, that the grant is attached to them to have to work with the police. I would like to know if there is any of those in, in Northampton. Mm -hmm. Could you so, repeat that, Javier? So there are some times that uh, service providers apply for a specific amount of money for a grant, and part of the grant implies the collab implies and and uh, is a prerequisite to have to work with the police department. 
Mm-hmm. And I, uh, one of the things that I was thinking is I would like to know how many of those are, or if any, in the in Northampton. Yeah. Which is, I think, is essential for us to know moving services, right? Because if a grant it's attached to that organization being able to coordinate and work with the police department, how how do you would move that? What's the origin of the grant? Who's the grantor in this instance that you're? Ah, uh, could be a state. Uh huh. Okay. Could be so, federal. So my understanding is there is financial. I may be wrong about this, but I don't think I am. I think there is funding to ServiceNet for some all, some co-partnering with the police mm -hmm. already. Mm -hmm. um, I believe there's also funding for safe passages to do some co-partnering with the police. Those are the two things I'm aware of. Um, and those are actually, those partnerships are on the police website, I believe. Um, I don't know enough. I don't know enough about what I think ha I'm hearing Javier say, which is what is the nature of those and how do they control the nature of the interactions. Um, I think it's a fair question to ask about because I think part of what we're going to get to is who do you call for assistance, and why is that who you call? Yeah. Um, okay, so. If I'm, you say, if I'm hearing you correctly, Booker, mm -hmm. my concern would be embedded in that phrasing of the question. Yeah. Okay. That's yeah. That's no, perfect for me. It's really good. It's, it's the exact like kind of question that I would expect you to ask. So we, you can either you know bring up that question for which she may not have the research to answer for because we didn't uh, ask it ahead of time or. Um, we can just send uh, an email that says, "Here's an information request. Tell us about this." Mm -hmm. um, doesn't it, we doesn't have to be part of this meeting, mm -hmm. uh, but either way, um, or if you don't get the full answer, then it can, we can follow up with with such an email. Mm -hmm. I'm not sure if the e information requests though have to go through the through Dan and Cynthia as chairs of the commission. Uh, I guess it would be wise to check in with them. Yeah, well, we can we can just say that she please send it to Noah and Dan, and you know they Noah would know to send it to us when that happened. Uh, I think it was more the um, with that they didn't want to duplicate requests, so that all information requests should go through Dan, uh, and then you know the information would come back. So. Uh, we could, I, 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 re, I sort of remember that. So yeah. we should probably. I think you're correct, Alex. That. It's more to, prov we don't want Chief Casper to get five, the same question from five different committees or five different places. Are there any other questions or comments about what's up? Good. So just organizationally, we have our list of questions. Are we going to just circulate who asks? Um, I would. Oh, um, how would you? How would you like this to occur? Would you? One thing would be we have the list of questions. We put them up and let her answer, or would you like individuals to reframe questions? What would you like? Um, I'd like individuals to, I'd like to be personal about this. Okay. Individuals to ask. And um, if you're, if you're chairing it, you could just ask who, who wants to ask the next one. I'm more than comfortable with doing that. Um, we could, I could ask different individuals to read different questions. Mm -hmm. I'm, I'm curious, are there questions that each of you are more interested in asking than what, what the cue is? Because well, actually, I, yeah. I would be I would really be comfortable with and I actually think it would be more personal saying, Hi, I'm chairing this discussion, I'm not going to ask Carol to read the first question. And you could choose which question you want to read. Mm 
Okay, yeah. Would you feel comfortable with that? Yeah, sure. Mm -hmm. Okay. Javier, are you, what do you think? Uh, it's fine with me. Mm -hmm. I'm, I, my, my plan is to listen. Deeply. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah, for me, I mean, the you know, asking the question, it doesn't matter who asks it, but, um, yeah. you know, we have for us to have the opportunity to ask the follow up questions mm -hmm. um, will be important. I think more as being the chair is going to be allowing the follow up questions to occur. Mm -hmm. And what I will try to do is watch how the chief is feeling about answering questions. And if we're going down a road that it feels like it's getting too narrow too fast. I might mm -hmm. ask that we right. yeah. switch to the next question. Sure, that sounds good. Facilitate the flow. Okay. So it's it's eight o'clock. So is there a waiting room? Is there a waiting room here? Um, when you say waiting room, what do you mean? Well, a waiting room. Sometimes when a visitor comes, it, I mean, you can set it up with a password or you can set it up in which case the person just pops in or you can set it up with a waiting room in which case yeah, something flashes on the screen that uh, Chief Casper is in the waiting room and you have to admit her. So it won't work that way. I, she'll, uh, she'll just uh, arrive, I, I guess. Um, my, um, Alex, correct me if I'm wrong. Both um, Alex is actually has, is in an, Alex won't be able to join the meeting until 8 p.m. on our, that date. So, we will not start the discussion with Chief Casper until 8 p.m., no matter what happens with the public comment that goes on before that. Yeah, okay, okay, all right. Mm -hmm. Am I remembering correctly, Alex? Mm -hmm. Okay, Alex, do you have any other comments about this format? No. Javier, do you have any other comments about the format? No, this looks great okay thank you so much alex for really pulling this together and putting out the initial questions to Wonderful. have up as as thought points with there were some additions um and as we said javier we tried to channel you into some of these questions um, uh, and uh, is everyone ready for me to stop sharing this mm -hmm. yeah okay Um, are there, before I, I'm going to take us to a discussion about thinking about prioritization for both about the writing of our final, beginning to the, the feel about the final report, but Javier, I want to come back to what you were saying about, um, your feelings about what's been going on with the commission recently. Mm -hmm. Do you want to go? Is it all right? By the way, is it all right, Carol and Alex, if we go to this? Mm -hmm. Yes. Okay. Sure. Yeah, there, there are two spe two specific things, right? Um, for me, there are some dissonance in in what is being said and done. And I refer to the dissonance in let's you know talking about for fifteen minutes, twenty minutes about listening the voices of affected people that we lost a woman of color mm -hmm. and right after that you know we get to this point where you know me as an immigrant jc as a as, as a first generation also immigrant and others uh, are not are not being heard and i have to be specific with this i'm talking about to the wider white portion of the commission, not this subcommittee at all. So for me, there is a dissonance. And that's the reason why in, in previous meetings I talk about, I, I get it. I mean, if you have not experienced, because we have to be cognizant on two things. The first one, most of white folks have not experienced a, a systemic oppression. Mm -hmm. And white folks have not experienced what we experience. And I understand that. And at the same time, I, I understand that even for people of color, they, got, they, they are people of color that the system work perfectly for them. Mm -hmm. So they are also many times lacking of the experience of oppression, right? 
or or people of color like me that uh, learn how to cope with the system and go to a place that it can be you know basically comfortable but this is coming from somebody who lived in the street for for for, for a long time mm -hmm. i left my house when i was 16. then i came here without knowing one word of english so when when i cannot ask and and I and I know that, but I also feel that I, I needed to make it explicit. I cannot ask them to understand the sen the sense of urgency of this matter, mm -hmm. right. because you cannot you you cannot I I can how can I put this I can talk to you about where I'm coming from, but you're never gonna experience. You're just hearing what I mm -hmm. where I'm coming from, like my neighborhood. This is the same. I can tell you about the urgency. I can tell you that when I came here in less than two months, I was stopped six times by police. Uh, Dan can talk to you about he being harassed and followed by police department. Mm -hmm. But words are sure for what those interactions and what's going on really affect our community. And I cannot, for my life, I cannot... Hold on, let me rephrase that. I, I understand why there is there is an impossibility embedded into social status, race, uh, cognizance. But at the same time, I see the dissonance when people are talking about the lack of the voices, right? That's one thing. The other is that I unilaterally decided to th say... I feel people are not reading the material that we're getting. And yeah, the material is a lot. And I appreciate that that is a lot. But I do feel that people are not reading the material. And the reason why I'm saying that in such a unilateral way is because for months we keep hearing white people in our commission stating that training should be done. Things can be better. Training, mm -hmm. uh, this mediation stuff. And I can and I can keep saying they are articles, they are parallel articles, they, they are reputed articles written how this doesn't work. Mm -hmm. And all of a sudden the same coming comes next week. The same coming comes next week. And all of a sudden I see the advocates sending articles and parallel articles about this. But people keep with the same narrative. So that's from <laughs> that's from where I'm in um um getting that I do feel that I can talk a lot about it. Uh, I can keep being the brown token in the room and keep raising these issues. Mm -hmm. But but the reality is that I, I, I'm part of the group that feels the urgency. I'm part of the group that mm -hmm. has experienced the urgency. So I... I had been sort of disenchanted in the last couple of meetings with the commission because of what I just said. Mm -hmm. So I'm, I'm going to, we're going to come back. I'm actually about to ask Carol and Alex to reflect on what Javier just said and where they are with some of these same things. Is that okay, Javier? Mm-hmm. Um, yes. I speak, please. Yeah. Booker, thank you for, um, opening it up in that way because, um, <clears throat> I am not a member of, I've never lived your experience, Javier, but I have lived in communities other than this, um, Baltimore, Washington, DC and, and Chicago and have had, I think, a lot of exposure to the kinds of dy power dynamics. I mean, I've observed it, I've observed my own uh, multiple layers of privilege. Uh, and sidebar comment, I have spoken with other members of this commission, other white members about the issue of privilege, unrecognized privilege that I, that I see going within this commission. And I think that when I moved here to New England, <clears throat> I ex even as a white upper middle class person, what I experienced moving from Chicago 
is that I was meeting people who fi- who f- who thought they had figured it all out, not just race relations. I figured everything out. And so I, I felt like I was entering into another demographic. Um, and I would laugh sometimes in Boston, telling people at, at the hospitals there that, you know, we on a grassroots level, we figured out this stuff in the Midwest years ago. And, you know, it wasn't invented by people in Boston. So I think there is an unconsciousness among folks who have not had a variety of experiences outside of their own comfort area where they're part of the dominant culture. It's, you know, people have good intentions here, very good intentions. But I think there's a sort of a blindness and a deafness to the idea that there's an urgency here. And I think the fact that some of us need to assert that urgency makes some other people feel bad and perhaps guilty. And, you know, who knows what comes up, but I think there's unconsciousness and there is, um, I remember when I moved to New England thinking, boy, these people are so polite. They won't even tell you what they think or feel, you know, you know, I've encountered that uh, a lot and, and probably I haven't been on the receiving end of what people really feel about me. Um, because I'm a white upper middle class professional person. So it goes unspoken and not even innuendo. Well, I mean, I've, I've I have felt the innuendo because I've, I've been on the receiving end of that. Uh, Cause I, tend to be very direct in, in a lot of settings. And so I think there's, there's definitely, uh, it's not you, <laughs> it's not you alone, Javier. Um, here I am, uh, in a different demographic and I, I feel, I feel some of that tension. Wow. Thank you, Carol. Mm-hmm. Alex, do you want to comment? Thanks, Carol. Yeah, thanks. Um, <clears throat> yeah, so I've noticed uh, what you've noticed as well, Javier. And um, I have thought about, uh, you know, when is the time for me to speak up and say something and, and not leave it to, um, <clears throat> to you or others to, but part of that, I've had a lot of confusion about what are we talking about and when, um, and because there's been such free form, um, you know, conversations at times, and it's a little unclear. Like, okay, are we talking now about the process that we will be undertaking, or are we talking about the details uh, of what we will be recommending, um, and? Uh, so that's, that's sort of been unclear. Like, are we even talking about the, whether training should be, uh, in, in this report or not in, in the wider meeting. And, um, so that kind of, that sort of, I, I've just been trying, I, so I haven't, uh, you know, spoken there, um, kind of waiting for that actual, this is the agenda item to talk about this. And maybe that's my city council approach. It's like, you only talk about what's on the agenda. <laughs> and uh, a lot of, we, we've done a lot of things other than that at times in this commission. Um, so I guess what I'm hoping for is that we'll, we'll have those discussions where we can express that disagreement, where we can be clear about, you know, where is the data? that if, if you're still looking at training, for example, and recommending more of that, then show the data on that. Um, and the, so that, that, yeah, that, I don't know if that explains sort of the, uh, if you're, if <clears throat> there's sort of a question of, you know, why aren't people backing me up here? And maybe that, maybe that was incorrect. Maybe I should have just jumped in then. Um, <clears throat> So um, that, that's a thought 
that just sort of yeah that that's that's the thought that comes to mind for me thank you alex um i'm gonna Thanks, alex. i'm gonna stop being the chair for hopefully not more than two minutes um so i'm one of those i, I can time you okay thank you, you. time me to <laughs> two to three minutes so um although i'm a black man i have a and i ooze with with privilege um you know i did i got to go to schools good private schools in berkeley california went to yale went to harvard um teaching faculty at harvard medical school uh, wrote test writing questions for who passes the medical boards and writing questions in a ways that foreign medical graduates and other kinds of people that we didn't want to become to have become doctors couldn't pass. And I thought that was a really good thing and it was a really good thing. So then I've had to spend the last 15 years unlearning everything that I thought was the right thing to do. So although I'm a black man, I share a lot of the privilege with a lot of white people. Um, um, and I can sort of see that going on within this process. Um, and, you know, and I, I have to say, I'm gonna say this anyway, but you know, although I really am glad that we have lots of activists helping with us for making things better, I'm, I, I don't have a diplomatic way of saying, I'm tired of seeing white faces telling me how to think. Mm -hmm. um, and um, especially when they say demands and when they say, I don't understand how you think about this. Um, you know, I have a lot going on in my head about that. Um, one of our activists who's been extraordinarily helpful in the materials he sent, then sent an email today suggesting we have facilitators and named white people to be the facilitators on this commission. Um, and I found that really difficult. Although everything else he's written to us has been really helpful. Um, then he did this. So this is a difficult wrenching process. But the reason I took this process on is I'm trying to get Trump out of my body. And I have the privilege of time because I'm only 60% employed is what I do. And I have the privilege of experience and I want to be able to use that, those things to make things better for everybody I'm hearing about from those activists, people who don't have the privilege I have and their experiences that I don't have. Um, people who have been, I'm using this word in the way that Cornell West would use it and Freeman Dyson would use it uh, people in our society who are white but have been niggerized. Um, and sort of what can I do with my privilege and my relative power to change that and what goes on with that. So I both am interested in major change, but I'm also <clears throat> a little bit of the drag that comes with privilege. And I sort of, and I looked a uh, Javier and the others who talk to us to help me let go of those drags and move ahead. Though I, I'm just gonna let all of you know, um, I've sort of spent my life staring at white faces and I'm used, I'm, I'm very used to being the only black person in rooms. And that is still what goes on with where I work, where I worship, where everything else I do. It, it, you know, that's my life and I'm used to it and I've grown accustomed to it, but I'm trying to, I want the world to be better for people who are not privileged, who are treated not well. And what I've learned 
from people I trust are not well treated by the police within Northampton. Um, and what we can do to make lives better and safer and better. So I'm going to stop. May I have the chairmanship back, Javier? Absolutely. Thank you. Thank you all for sharing. Now let's go back. Hold on. Thank you so much for sharing that, Booker. I really appreciate it. Yeah. Can we not rush for a moment, Booker? Sure. I, I think this sharing has this opening. Okay. You know, just taking the lid off uh, about dynamics that have existed. It's a profoundly important thing. I just want to say that. Um, <clears throat> not to do that, I think, would further sort of corrupt this process. Uh, we're trying to be open and honest here. And it's important. So thank you. Yes, thank you for being vulnerable. You know, um, so I, you know, I work for the ACLU. Um, almost three years and a half. Um, the person in Western Mass working in campaigns and working in police reform and other stuff. But I started at ACLU working in immigration mm -hmm. during the Trump administration. And the amount of times that local police enforcement in Springfield or other cities would handle undocumented fathers and mothers to ICE or Years ago, uh, that would happen almost in a daily basis in our Hampton with the police department with the previous chief years ago, several years ago. Um, also, because of the immigration system being a setup, the uh, amount of times that the only thing that I would be able to do for a family of undocumented folks that their dad was going to get deported, leaving behind a baby and two kids, was to stop by their house near Greenfield mm -hmm. for a suitcase so the guy would have a change of underwear landing in Guatemala. Yeah. So that family knows urgency. Mm -hmm. Um and this is and, and that's something that that uh, I hope people can understand because you know I, I, Carol, I remember when Obama got elected, I was able, I became a citizen to be able to vote for Obama uh, when, the, when he was reelected. And living in Northampton, Obama got elected, mm -hmm. and everybody, we figured it out. We figured it out yeah, class, right. we figured it out race, we figured right. it out gender. Mm -hmm. We live in a really conservative state. I know that people like to think that Massachusetts is progressive. Mm hmm. But, you know, show me a piece of legislation that the Massachusetts legislature passed during Trump protecting minorities. Show me one. Uh, besides the Roe Act that passed and got vetoed and, over, and Baker was overbid. No protections for minorities. No protection for undocumented folks at all. Mm -hmm. So, you know, I love to work in the Springfield because I know what I get. <laughs> <laughs> I know what I get. I know what I get with the mayor. I know what I get with the police chief. I know what I get. I know who's who. But many times in this work in the Upper Valley, mm -hmm. you run with this uh, white liberal exceptionalism. It makes things difficult. That you want to you wanna make changes, and the first thing that you hear is, but we have the most progressive police department. Mm -hmm. It's like, and, and, and going back, I like, do we need to talk about the, that this is systemic and, uh, and, 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 and trying people to self-educate themselves about what that means? Mm -hmm. um, but I do appreciate it, and I want to say it again. I, if I haven't left the commission, it's because of the subcommittee. <laughs> Honestly, being absolutely honest with you. Because I do feel that what we do, the four of us, 
is extremely meaningful. What I feel working with every one of you, the interactions that I have with Booker, the way how we talk about this stuff, I do feel that it's more conducive to what we're looking for. Mm -hmm. uh, I do would like sometimes that me or Joycey, we wouldn't be the ones having to come and, and, and pontificate because, you know, after the second time, people get really apathic with that. It doesn't really matter what the, what the other person says. Um, and, and I think that's, that's what some people in the, in the commission are being called for. I mean, called to do, not called for, called to do, which is, we should realize that when we're talking about amplifying voices, it also implies using our privilege to amplify those, those voices, right? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And not putting ourselves in a situation but amplifying others' voices. And and hopefully in some point we're going to be able to do it in the commission. I don't see how because of the time constraint. Mm -hmm. uh, but honestly, many times I have thought sucks that I can I cannot call Booker on the phone and just talk mm -hmm. for an hour. Yeah. Sucks. Because uh, because of open law meeting and all that sucks. So I'm really looking forward to be done with this. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> no, I, I, I totally agree. I mean, this is this this process is so alien to any organizing I have ever done in my life. <laughs> you know, you get to know people intimately when you're working, you're working on change. Oh. Um, there's a, okay, I'm putting, this is very special and it's a good, um, there's something about Zoom so you can't see that my eyes are watering. Um, so maybe that's a good thing from the way I view the world. Um, but this is a very moving discussion we've just had. And, and by the way, I, I shared in another meeting how this has, this process has changed the entire way I take care of people I care for as patients. Um, it sort of has really altered a lot of things. So no matter what, this has been a life-changing process for me. Um, and all, all of you have been a major part of that. So, but now I'm gonna turn back into a institutional change kind of person. Um, so where do we take what we've just talked about where do we want, how do we want to bring that to the larger commission in terms of next steps? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Alex. So uh, in the past, I, I think it's been helpful for the committee to um, the times that I've just put something forward in a draft form and then people can run with it and modify it and um, so I just tried uh, typing up uh, kind of, okay, here's, here's phase one, here's what we want to see in the next year, here's things for the year after that. Um, and I could share that and we could uh, edit it and or just reflect on, on different priorities if, if that seems uh, appropriate. Thank you. Let's hold that thought. I'm going to let's view this as a little brainstorm, if that's okay. I'm confused. I thought, Booker, I'm sorry. I thought your that's question good. that you were posing was how we might bring this powerful conversation that we've just had that's sharing, how we might convey some of that back to the larger commission. Am I? Correct that that was your question or? You're correct. I'm, yes. I I actually heard Alex's comment as being a way to do that. Okay, all right, okay. Um, so now that you've, I'm really curious to hear what you think we might do with this. Me too. Because I think, I think your voice about this kind of thing is really good. So where, where do you, Carol, where do you think we ought to go with what just happened with this discussion with the larger commission process? Okay. Well, I think somehow we have to uh, 
as a subcommittee write and reflect something that we share uh, with the commission that may or may not be entered in in some form <clears throat> to the final report. Because you know, when I think about this commission ending and I'm, I'm with you, it would be wonderful just to talk with y'all in a normal way <laughs> instead of the, you know, the parliamentary stuff that I think is very, adds its own structural aspect that is oppressive. It, 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 the, the way we are made to have these meetings, we are required to have these meetings, I think um, amplifies the unfortunate power dimensions. And <clears throat> so when I think of it ending, and on some level, it's been fabulously interesting to me and engaging. On the other hand, some of the structures are annoying and I would like to know all of you a lot more intimately <laughs> outside of here. Um, but I can't imagine when this is done that if that I could feel really good about having my name on that report without some consideration, more than consideration, some larger acknowledgement of some of the power dimensions in a commission like this that get in the way and don't get spoken of, don't get called out. <clears throat> and regardless of how brilliant our recommendations are to the city, I think the process, call me a feminist process freak or something, but you know, I think the process piece has to be spoken to, spoken of in some way outside of this subcommittee. And it's uncomfortable. I, you know, I've interacted, I said, with other commissioners and I feel the discomfort and I put my own privilege right on the table and talk about how unconscious some of that stuff can be and how hurtful it can be. <clears throat> Javier, do you have thoughts? Yeah. Um, two things. The first one is I, I do feel that I agree with Carol mm -hmm. and I think even you Booker and Alex brought this set up. There has to be some contextualization of the process written down. Because this, the, 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 whatever resolution is taken, whatever recommendation is done, is not just going to come out in a vacuum. Mm -hmm. And I think that's, that's worth uh, sort of immortalizing in, like, in a section of it. Because uh, at the end of the day, um, it's important. It, that, that's important. At least, if if we don't get where where some of us want to get, uh, doesn't leave room to understand that one of the reasons that we didn't get there was because of this context. Mm -hmm. Or if we get there, it was because we were able to create this context within the commission to make it happen. I think in either way, positive or negative, uh, adds to the narrative and, and adds to the thought process. And, you know, to, uh, for us, and, I, and Alex have said this, uh, the, the sh being able to show the process, being able to transparent with the process is one of the things that validates what we're doing right now. And I think this is, this, that should be considered as part of the process. The other thing, it's, um, we talk a lot about, um, in with with affected communities about um people in in in, in position of privilege or in privilege um at many times not necessarily addressing intention or not intention but about addressing the effect of the action and i think that's important because we need to understand that the action or inaction has an effect and, and if I understood well, I mean, I mentioned that I would like to see people that see the, the power dynamics and that are more sort of thinking, you know what, what Javier is saying, what Joyce is saying, what Dan is saying, it's not 
far-fetched. I mean, we talk about this. We agree with this. And all of a sudden, it's just the three uh, guys talking about this. To come forward, the inaction of it also becomes pervasive within the group. Um, I I have come to terms that I see, and as, as, as Booker said, um, I see that people... People, uh, there are people that feel comfortable how things are, and that um, there are, and there are people that are going to try to find a really uh, not in, not concrete way to propose things that probably are just going to dilute. And I I do appreciate. I think it was you Booker who said oh, that we need to be concrete if we're going to make this happen, or at least if we're going to actually push either the city council or the mayor to do something, we need to be as concrete as we can. Mm -hmm. And I, I agree with that. And I think that if, if, because at the end of the day, we're not even talking about fully defunding the police and closing the shop and going home, right? We're not talking about that. I mean, the most revolutionary thing that we have talked as a committee, as a commission, has been, let's create a new department. <laughs> that's that's the most revolutionary thing, right. and that's reason. What that's one of the reasons why yesterday, I was talking about when you talk about opening another department, you have all this counter. Uh, from pe push back from people that are are tied to the system because the system has worked. This is my system. This is this is a system that I'm happy with. I don't understand why you're not happy. Which is that reaction. Um, and even more with, well, how you're going to finance it, how you're going to do this. And that's the reason why I talked yesterday about how the school district works. When the school district has a student with, 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 that needs services mm -hmm. that is cannot find within the, the Northampton school district, that student goes to Holyoke, to Westfield, where they have those services. And who pays the bill? <laughs> the, the school district in Northampton. Even though you know they fight it to the nail before sending anybody out, but that's the process. So again, what we're asking, and, and and I think this is where my 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 own frustration comes. What I'm asking, and what others are asking, is really simple. It's not revolutionary. It's not a game changer. It's something that, from the financial point of view, is something that has been done with other departments. If you are moving money, if you if the school district is paying a different district for because they cannot provide that service, we only just need to recognize that the police should not be providing that service. And I think we have agreement on that in relationship to sexual assault, domestic violence, and a mental health crisis. Um, so that's that's not revolutionary. And the creation of the department, even there are people who are telling me that I'm advocating for more bureaucracy. I don't think so. <laughs> So my frustration comes from that. So I do feel that talking about the process, immortalizing these dynamics, it's highly necessary. Um, I'm going to do something a little out of weird. Um, this has been a very powerful discussion. We are going to, it's 8.38. I want to come back to this at 8.45. I am really pleased that Jose and Cynthia are watching this discussion. Maybe they are, maybe they aren't. Um, and I wanna ask if, I really wanna first ask Jose, um, and then I'm gonna ask Cynthia if they have comments about the discussion that they've been hearing. And actually what I'm really curious to hear is how can we bring this discussion to the larger commission and and how might it, how, what, their, what their thoughts are. So um, Jose, may I ask you first, would you be willing to come on and talk? Uh, can you hear me? I can. Yes. All right, I'm on video. Yeah. All right, um, well, I think it's a really powerful discussion. Um, and I think, uh, I just like to say this is my favorite 
part of the police commission review for sure because i think an alternative department like you know javier was just saying is actually the thing that we really need and that we would benefit from and i agree that a lot of the lashback is coming from people that are like oh well this system works for me um so i don't see what's wrong with it um i think that uh you know i kind of like that uh the story that javier shared um you know about like how a lot of the people you know here even myself included even though i come from um you know poverty in general like we don't have that sense of urgency about some of this but um i feel like this group does a good job of really like understanding that you know a lot of people won't really be able to understand and i feel like everyone's working really hard to make room for the people who are underrepresented so you know i'm i'm kind of yeah i'm kind of happy with how it's going in general and i think that if this does end up in a new department you know i think that's the strongest push from this that i'd like to see like we just need a new department um because i feel like if we can do that separately from our about my dreams of abolishing the police then it'll get done faster and help us out thank you so much jose i'm going to turn to cynthia now um cynthia would you be willing to speak with us for um not more than five minutes <laughs> That's a guarantee. Thank you, Booker, Javier, uh, Alex, and Carol. Um, um, if I could respond in two ways, one is a co-chair and then one is a, a person on the commission, if that's okay. Um, that's fine, thank you. Um, um, Dan and I have been talking um, about sketching out, and I think we mentioned it, um, sketching out sort of a skeleton of the final report. And I think he brought it up last night but anyway, I started doing it and, and there is a section in there. It's just a bone that says process. Um, how did this committee work, function, good, bad, ugly? And that, you know, that's gonna be a kind of a collective <laughs> piece um, that we should all participate in. Um, the other thing that um, we're pulling together is um, a list of things we think very broad terms, there is consensus on, just to get us moving in that direction, because we've been talking about that a lot. Um, and so I just wanted to let you know that. And then also sort of in this co-chair role, um, it's perfectly you know, um, acceptable, normal, if you all want to put something like this conversation on the agenda, because we have to do the agenda tomorrow evening so that it gets on in time, you know, with all this craziness that we're, we're adhering to. So I leave that up to you, but it certainly can be on the agenda. Um, and then um, finally, it's this, you can never get used to this process of what Carol was referring to as, you know, open meeting, parliamentary, and then you layer Zoom on top of it. So right, right. Um, I totally, understand our limitations. Um, so as a commissioner, I wanna say that um, I feel urgency. So I would like to at some point in time, um, so that's me. And if it's coming out differently from fellow commissioners, I, I wanna hear that. I happen to be on a committee that um, in all frankness um, gets swiped around a bit. <laughs> you know, the policy and procedure committee. Um, people are saying they're doing this, they're doing that. And um, it's a tough, it's a tough um, group and it's a tough agenda. And so I wanna let you know that um, it goes in a variety of different directions and we're trying to steer it into a direction and sometimes it's very difficult and I wanna acknowledge that. And I wanna talk to um, my fellow uh, subcommittee folks about that. So. Um, but as a commissioner, as a member of a subcommittee, um, I, you know, I just want to take up the training piece. Um, I thought we had moved beyond it. I, that's, that's how I'm sort of hearing it. I've heard training being brought up and then some great resources were presented to us by some of the people who are here tonight. 
um, that really debunk this notion that training that training works. And so, um, but I'm 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 hearing one thing through a set of years and experience, and so I just want to, you know, acknowledge that I thought we moved away from that. Just like um, I learned from talking with a couple of uh, um, the activists privately in a, in a Zoom conversation about just civilian control. Well, let's put let's just put a civilian commission over the police department, and that'll fix everything. And they so rightly pointed out to me, no, it won't. And then immediately gave me all the links and and um, positions for that have been established for years on how that doesn't work. And so um, I want everyone to know that I read everything, <laughs> and I have learned so freaking much on this committee. And there are many times, like you, Javier, I'm just like, I don't know if I can do this anymore, because in my career, this is about one of the hardest things that I've ever done because it's frustrating and it's hard and it's about humanity. And I also wanna say that um, I have a story about my life and who I am and where I came from. Um, and so that story you know, may be relevant and may not be relevant, but I have one too. And I feel the sense of urgency and Carol, I'm from the Midwest too, so I know exactly what you're talking about. about <laughs> yeah. but, um, it's shameful to me that I've lived in this community for several years and I haven't seen and I haven't felt some of the things, all of the things that, that so many people here have been, so many of our um, activists have been talking about and the people that spent so much time doing this in June, um, talking to the city council. So um, I, I think it's a good conversation to have. I think it's a hard conversation to have. I want you to know I'm with you. I want you to know um, part of the reason I wanted to work with Dan was because I'm kind of like this program manager people person and I wanted to get it done. You know, the hard stuff, not the fluff stuff. I wanted to say what we needed to say because everyone that I've talked to, city councilors and everything say to me, we gave you a hell of a job. And I'm thinking, no, you didn't. You have a hell of a job. City, Mayor, Alex, you guys have a hell of a job. And we can write the most radical report and I hope we do, but it's gotta be turned over to this bureaucracy that we kind of sort of kind of trust and um, they've got to make it happen. So um, I'm with you. I think it's um, it's a great conversation to have. Um, I just wanna just go on the record to say that I have a story too. I don't need to spend the time here telling you about it, um, but um, I really want to, I really feel that sense of urgency. So um, Javier, if I haven't displayed that because of what my training is and what my background is, I apologize for that. Um, and I'll, I'll really take that on and certainly with my subcommittee as well. So um, I hope that's helpful to some degree. Cynthia, thank you. Yeah. Um, it was helpful to me, if not for others. Um, thank you so much. Does anyone have a comment about what we're going to come back to where our next steps? Does anyone have a comment about what either Cynthia or Jose have shared with us? I, I, I do briefly. I appreciate both comments. Um, I wish we had more attendance from other commissioners to this meeting, specifically this one. Um, and and again, I we should not be creating a document thinking about the city council or the mayor at all. We should be creating the kind of document that we feel is necessary for what is happening right now independently of the mayor or whoever is seated in the city council because what's necessary it's necessary without with saying who is in charge of the city or the city council that shouldn't change the recommendation because what is necessary is necessary if, if the mayor or the city council opt out of what we're proposing, let's 
let them opt out of what is necessary, not something that is watered down to try to please them. Our 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 charge is to come out with recommendations based in a reality in what's happening. Our charge is not trying to get a mid mid ground to be able to maybe please the mayor or the city council. So to be, that's gonna that's gonna be a change. A change do, done in the wrong way, it's always gonna be a wrong change, the, the wrong kind of change. Uh, and I always say this, and even to, I, I have said this in ACLU stuff. There is beautiful, there is there, there is something beautiful about losing big when you do the right <laughs> thing and you mm -hmm. fight. Mm -hmm. So yeah. the report has to reflect a reality and what our society needs, not what the mayor would willingly or not uh, take as a recommendation. Create the document that is necessary. That's the, my take home message from what you just said, Javier. Carol, do you have any thoughts or comments before we go on to um, next steps? Yeah, I just thought of a title for our report, final report, it is necessario. <laughs> there you are. Okay. Alex, do you have any comments before we go on? So by the way, I'm sorry, Alex, I hear everybody saying actually what you initially suggested that we need to write down in some way, shape or form, we need to think about documenting this discussion. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. Yeah. Um, and that might be part of our alternatives committee report to the larger commission. But I'm gonna. I'm just setting that aside. I'm. I'm really saying that I hear we're all actually saying something that Alex said initially, um, in different ways, shapes, and forms. But now, Alex, do you have thoughts? Oh, oh poor. Yes. Poor. Sorry, there's uh, some commotion here. So. It's okay. Um, yeah, I appreciate Javier. Um, there's something beautiful about losing big uh, <laughs> in the sense that, that that's a there's a political reality that I face where potentially a, a lot of my um, constituents don't see uh, don't see that don't see the experience you know they see a positive experience of the police and so I have to explain to them and I have to justify what is necessary um, and um that's complicated and there's there's this element of 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 risk that i may do that and then i may lose uh, and the, but but it's important to do the right thing and i think that i've tried to do that throughout my uh well life but political career um and uh so i'm i'd much rather do that than uh you know what's i can't think of the right words but uh placate thank you for thank you can, for can your, i say something sure thank you for your very honest description of what you're doing alex alex that, javier go that, ahead that reminds me uh i think it was michelle obama who said like being president reveals who you really are mm -hmm. and I would say being in a position of decision should not change who you are, but reveal who you really are, right? Because at the end of the day, I mean, you know, going to Springfield again, I remember when Adam Gomez was city council member of the poorest ward or one in, in Massachusetts, predominantly Latino, predominantly undocumented folks, and against everybody, we passed the safe, the welcome city ordinance protecting undocumented folks. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Let me tell you, this year, mm -hmm. he's serving as a state senator mm -hmm. uh, in the legislature. Mm -hmm. um, so you know, I I I do appreciate your honesty. I do appreciate because you know context at the end of the day is everything, and I appreciate that you are. 
being being honest from that point of view, but also honest about you are conscious that you are you are by yourself having to educate people from your voters about this matter. And if I can add to that, please, Carol, I go realize, ahead. I realize, Alex, how difficult it is because I encounter that myself. And it's so hard, but probably worth trying, uh, though hard, to converse with people about not invalidate their good experience of a good a good and helpful cop who came when they had a uh, breaking entering or their car theft or whatever the i mean i think it's it's been important for me to validate that experience with people who say you know you guys are just anti cop no i respect what they have to do and it's it's wonderful you've had this good experience but but then segue into the structural issues the structural the systemic issues that really what what we pay attention to here uh, a lot are the structural and the systemic issues that um, have long standing, not only in this town, but many towns that that deeply and negatively affect people. Um, and that so there's two truths here, you know, is what I say to neighbors who say, you know, oh, they had such a good experience with NPD on one occasion. I mean, when you do when you do anti racist work, you get that stuff all the time, you know, the the one good, you know, the individual experience of that that helpful person, and why would why would I be critical? Um, so somehow, and it doesn't always get received. It doesn't always land right. But somehow, segueing into what some of the structural issues are and the systemic issues um, is a way to say, well, you know, I'm really glad you've had your good individual experience, but but there's this other piece that is very profound and that we can do better and we don't have to wait for the first black or brown man running down main street to get shot in the chest we don't you know we don't have to wait we can make it better alex uh just seeing that we have about four minutes left oh, four. i wanted to ask if uh, do you want me I don't think we have time to discuss it at this point, but do you want me to share this rough draft um, or do we all want to each come up with our own rough draft and bring it to a future meeting, uh, whichever? Um, Javier, do you have thoughts? Um, an informed decision for me based in previous experiences, I would totally trust <laughs> Alex drafting something. Carol? Yeah, I I would be happy to go with Alex. You've played an important role in that regard. Um I will make unanimous that thought that I've never seen you write anything that I didn't agree with and wish I hadn't written. Um so I am also comfortable with that. Um, is the goal of this something to share at the larger human rights, uh, human rights, um, police and commission meeting? Yes. Uh, not in this form, but I think I'd say rather for us to to uh, you know, it, it's 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 just a couple. Uh, you know, yeah. paragraphs of bullet points. It's really not very much. It's just a starting point, and um, and something for us to uh, you know discuss at future meetings. And, and along with that document, which maybe perhaps you could just share it with us via email for not for discussion. Here's why: for the next at the next. Uh, larger police and commission meeting, which I believe is happening next Tuesday. Mm -hmm. When we are asked to give an alternative police and commission report, mm -hmm. I think each of us might say something for a minute or two about this discussion. Mm -hmm. I'm, I'm proposing that to you. Um, and if people wish to, they may. Um, 
I think this has been a very powerful discussion. I think it's something that the larger policing commission needs to hear. It's not exact, it's impossible for 16 people to discuss it, um, but it's an important thing to be heard. Um, I think narratives, stories are extraordinarily important, though the stories all take too long um, for a larger committee report. So it's thinking about how to frame our experience and sort of the end. How do we distill this discussion that just occurred? But I think it needs to be shared with the larger committee in some way, shape or form. Um, um, that's a suggestion and people don't have to do that, but that's a suggestion. But and then I think we also have to think about how should this be a larger part of the larger police and commission report, just so I, I think all of us are talking about the influence of power mm -hmm. um, and privilege and how that influences the word I want to use is biases, the way we approach this whole process. But I'm going to I'm leaving that out there and we don't have to make a decision about this. Are there other issues that people want to bring up? Can you tell that I read the um, report about how to facilitate consent towards consensus. <laughs> and I'm trying to do all of the things. Yes, that we're I, yeah. it's been operational tonight. It's you, called the round. I love, I love you, the round. Everybody's uh, had voice here. Do the right? remarkable job. <laughs> <laughs> just, a, just a reference that I'm, I am reading as Javier yes, said, right, please go right. read the report. <laughs> Are there other things that people would like to bring up? I agree with Booker that we would be would not be good not to try to bring this kind of conversation or at least let the commission the bigger commission know that this kind of conversation happened. Mm -hmm. Um because at the end of the day, I mean the goal the you know, idealistically would be for this kind of conversation also happening in the group, in the bigger group. Um, if we bring that experience and that that's not sparked anything, so be it. But I think because we're able to do it in such a manner that this meeting feels really, really, really good, I think we sort of own to be able to try to translate the experience to the bigger commission. Carol, do you have other thoughts or more thoughts? Well, I mean, the thing that I'm sitting with, and I'll, I'll work on some of what I want to share at our next meeting, if that's what we're going to do, it's it's the unseen and the unheard. Uh, that I think is significant and uncomfortable for me, you know, in terms of power dynamics within the commission with all members being well-intentioned and showing up. You. You can't be well intentioned if you if you're if you're willing to spend all your evenings in this in this format. There's there's good intentions, but but there's some unacknowledged um, vibrations that have felt uncomfortable and um, that need to be spoken of. I guess, and and you know, I, I think in a lot of ways, a commission like this just parallels what goes on out there you know, in the larger community. Yeah. I didn't think it would, but unfortunately we've all seen that it has, um, which was a real surprise. Alex, you have the last word before I ask for a motion to adjourn. Um, yeah, I, I think it uh, would be great to have, have some time to share this experience and um, I'm if it's okay. I'm j I am just going to post. I will email um, or I will ask Noah to email it um, to to all of you. But um, I will just post it in the chat so that those who are um, participating can also view and be able to give comment. So that's okay. The just the rough draft. Thank you, all of you, for showing Very so helpful. much. Thank you, Alex. Yeah. Thank you so much mm -hmm. for showing so much of yourselves and being so present and being so 
willing to listen and to hear. Um, there are suggestions in my chat that I ought to be asking. I'm not going to, but Ya Ping, I'm hoping if you're still there that at a public comment, you might talk about whether this is a process that you think the other committees might want to pursue. Um, I think you're, you have a wonderful voice for suggesting that to people. And if that's something that you would feel comfortable with, I hope that would be the case. I would welcome a motion to adjourn at this point. Mm -hmm. Motion to adjourn. Second. Second. Um, please raise your hands if you agree to adjourn so I can see them. <laughs> Thank you so much. Um, we are now finished with our meeting and we will, um, as a reminder, our next meeting will be next Wednesday. Um, public comment from 7.30 till eight, we will be joined by Chief Jody Casper from eight until nine and then a debrief afterwards. Looking forward to seeing all of you there. Thank you so Thank much, you. Booker. Right, Thank you well. so much. Be well. Good night all. Good night.